Hi everyone, this is Kendall from Sage Family Farm. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be meeting my two miniature sheep, Marshmallow and Coco, today. Uh, if you're new to watching us live, there is a little window over here where you can type questions to me. Only I can see your questions, so no one else that's watching can see what you ask me. Uh, nobody, including myself, can see or hear you. I can only see what you type over here. And every so often, I'm going to have some questions for you, and I'll point them out. They'll show up down here, and you can click and answer. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to start our Meet the Sheep presentation. Oh, for questions. I usually get to them at the end. Sometimes I can read them in the middle, but it's really hard to show you guys some cool videos, pictures, and talk and answer questions at the same time. So if you do type something in here and I don't get to it right away, I will take a look at the very end and make sure I answer everybody's questions. So let's take a look at my adorable baby doll sheep. So here are my two sheep. Uh, they live in my backyard, which is pretty small. Uh, the white one is Marshmallow, and the brown one is Coco. Uh, maybe that's a little obvious, but uh, these two sheep are miniature baby doll sheep. So that is a specific breed um, of sheep. They might also sometimes be referred to as um, baby doll South Down sheep. So it's a breed that originates from England. They are very tiny. Um, so this is their full grown size. Both of these sheep are almost a year and a half old, a little bit less than a year and a half old. So that means they are full grown adult sheep and they are probably about the size and weight of a golden retriever. Um, so they're pretty tiny. And today I wanted to go over a few of the things that I do to take care of my sheep. So everything I do to take care of them. And then I also wanted to cover all of the good stuff that we get from sheep. So here's my first question to you and it's free form. So you or your parents can type over here if you know the answer to this question is what is something we can get from sheep? So Let's try to think of some things that we get from sheep. So the sheep are pretty fuzzy. Um, so I definitely have some clothes that my sheep helped make. Um, so if you know maybe how that happened, type some answers over here. Um, let's see, there's some other stuff I get from sheep. My sheep actually helped me in my garden. So if you can think of any ways a sheep would help me in my garden, um, you can type them over here. And there are even some things that I eat from sheep. So if you can think of any I might eat from a sheep, you can type it over here. And let's see if anyone, oh, so a lot of people said wool. I think everyone's noticing how nice and fluffy my sheep are. So wool, so that's definitely helping with my clothing. A few people are saying cheese. And let's see. And oh, I also have another um, question in here that I wanted to answer is, will we be meeting the sheep in the backyard and seeing real animals? Yes. So I have some videos because my web service is not very um, fast in my backyard. So just to make sure I don't get choppy, I'm going to be showing you lots of videos of the sheep. So we're going to see lots of live action videos of the sheep. Um, so we'll be seeing that. I'm going to start out with some pictures and then we're going to shift over to our videos. So let's take a look at, I have some pictures to show us first. So the first one, so a lot of you guys said wool. So we are going to, like wool is one thing we can get from our sheep and it usually starts out pretty messy. So in one of these pictures, we can see how the messy wool goes to, it gets washed and then carded, this is done with brushes. We actually brush the wool, so all the fibers go in the same direction, and then it can be spun into yarn, and that yarn can be used to make sweaters, socks, dryer balls, so you can actually felt them by poking them a whole bunch and turn them into a dryer ball. You can even make toys uh, for yourself or your animals. I think the little tiger ball down there is actually a dog toy made from wool. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that we can make from wool. And then I saw some people said there's milk and cheese that we can get from our sheep. And 
I have a quick video to show you of someone milking a sheep. Um, so we're going to come in and look at this sheep's udder. So here we go. Is This is someone, this is the udder, so just like a cow. And this woman is milking this sheep. So it's kind of a rolling motion to milk the sheep. And the milk is coming into that cup. So from sheep's milk, we can make a lot of different things. Um, and milking a sheep is a lot like milking a cow, except for a cow has that hang down where you would milk it from. And a sheep usually only has two. Um, so that's very similar to milking a cow. So let's take a look at all of the uh, things that we can get from sheep milk, because that sheep milk, you could drink it as it is. Um, which many people don't drink sheep milk. It has a stronger taste, but it makes excellent cheese and excellent yogurt. And I actually have another question for you guys, and it's going to pop up down here. So if you take a look, um, that actually wasn't one of my sheep. And my question to you guys is, why can't we milk cocoa and marshmallow? Why can't we milk my sheep? Um, so some of the answers might be they are the wrong kind of sheep and cannot make milk. The second answer would be they need to have babies to make milk. And the last one is they aren't old enough to make milk. So let's try to think of why an animal would make milk. Um, so you might have heard earlier when I was showing the pictures of the sheep, even though they're so tiny, they're full grown. So these are adult sheep and they are both girls. Um, but it's not because they're too young. They are full grown adult sheep. So I could milk them one day, but I can't milk them right now. Let's see. One of the other answers is they're the wrong kind of sheep and just don't make milk. Actually, all sheep are capable of making milk. Not all of them are very good at it. So some breeds of sheep, they're not so great at making milk, especially extra milk for us to get. But some breeds of sheep, so different types of sheep are great at producing lots of extra milk so that we can have sheep milk, cheese, and sheep yogurt. So it's not that they're the wrong kind of sheep. So if we were thinking about why an animal might make milk, it's for its babies. So a cow actually only makes milk when it has a baby. And after about a few years, if you're milking that cow regularly, you feed the baby a little bit of the milk, and then you can take some of the extra milk. But usually that cow starts running low on milk after a few years and she needs to have another baby. It's the same for sheep. Sheep produce the milk not just for us, it's actually for their babies. So we're actually in the milk with the baby lamb. Uh, so that's why I can't milk marshmallow or cocoa is because they need to have a baby in order to start making milk. And my two sheep do not have babies. Uh, maybe one day, but right now they don't have any babies, so I cannot milk them. So this is something I can't get from my sheep, but I could get wool from them. So let's take a look at one of the other things we can get from them. So I'm not going to do this with my sheep, but sheep are raised for meat, so we can get meat from sheep, just like bacon comes from pigs and cheeseburgers come from cows. So we could get meat from our sheep. Usually they're made from younger sheep. So a uh, sheep that is less than one year old. Um, so meat is one thing we can get from our sheep. And then another thing, this is kind of a weirder thing that maybe a lot of people don't know about. This is lanolin. So we can also get lanolin from our sheep. And lanolin is this kind of greasy sort of material and it's excreted from glands on the sheep and it coats the wool. So if you touch the wool, unwashed wool that's right on the sheep actually feels a little greasy. And this helps the sheep if it starts raining, it helps the sheep be a little waterproof so that the sheep doesn't get all soggy and wet. So it helps it repel water. So we can actually harvest lanolin. So when we shear the sheep and we wash the wool, the lanolin can come off. So there are special ways for harvesting lanolin and we can mix this into uh, skin creams to help moisturize our skin, into hair conditioner, and even into certain lip balms. So humans can actually use lanolin that we harvest from our sheep. So 
Next thing is, so these are all the things that I'm getting from my sheep, but there's a few more things that are helping me out in the garden. So in the garden, my sheep actually help me in similar ways to how my chickens help me, if you watched my chicken lesson. So I'm gonna show you a video of one way my sheep helped me. So this is Coco and she is eating a whole bunch of yard trimmings. So I was in my garden and I was cutting things and she even has some yard trimmings on her because I was throwing them into the pen and it just got stuck on her. I think Marshmallow ate the trimmings off of Coco. Um, so my sheep can actually eat a lot of weeds and cuttings from my garden so that I don't have to throw them away. Um, so my sheep are eating my weeds. They could even mow my lawn for me. So I would usually have to pen them in so they don't run off, but they'll eat grass, they eat all sorts of things. Sheep have really strong stomachs so they can eat a lot of plants that a lot of other animals would find poisonous. Um, so sheep have a really nice strong stomach. And there's another way that they help me in my garden. So after eating all of these weeds and leaves and clippings, they poop. So my chick, uh, my sheep poop. Here is what the ground in my sheep's living area looks like. So it's got all of these tiny little pellets and that is actually sheep poop, which for us, we might say, oh, sheep poop. But my plants say, mm, yum, this is delicious. So sheep poop makes wonderful fertilizer. So when I go to put this in my garden, so here's another video of, I usually take a shovel and shovel out the area where my sheep live and they're pooping a lot. And in every spring, I'll take some and I'll mix it into my veggie bed. So you can see I have some beautiful flowers blooming and this is gonna be great fertilizer for my plants. So I can plant some new plants in here and this is gonna be great food for them. So these are all the ways that my sheep help me. I got wool, we have some milk, which helps us make cheese, yogurt, other products. We've got meat that we can get from sheep. We have, uh, and they can even help us in our garden with fertilizer and eating extra lawn clippings. So I am getting tons of great stuff from my sheep. So I have to do a bunch of things to take care of them. So I wanna take very good care of my sheep. So uh, let's think of some ways that I can help my sheep, how you might take care of another pet. So the first thing that most people usually think of is I have to feed my pets. So how do I feed my sheep? So I've got another video of me feeding the sheep because food, is my sheep's absolute favorite thing. They love food. So here is a video of how excited they get when they see me coming with food. So I'm actually standing next to their pen holding a bowl of food and they usually start running back and forth. And Coco here did a little like kick for joy. So she loves to jump and kick when she sees food. So the sheep are obviously really excited for food. So let me show you the food that they eat. So when I carry in their food, I usually have a big pile of alfalfa. So it's this green stuff that the two sheep and the one gray chicken seem to be eating. So the chickens are sometimes interested in the sheep food. This is alfalfa. So it's not the yellow straw that you might see bales of around Halloween time. It's very green and leafy and has different nutrients in it so that yellow straw or hay that's usually used for bedding so the sheep they chew on it a little bit but they don't really eat it alfalfa so that nice healthy green stuff is what my sheep eat and each sheep eats about one pound of alfalfa a day um so usually i put in two pounds actually they eat two pounds a day because i put in two pounds of alfalfa in the morning and two pounds of alfalfa in the evening and they kind of split it so they get morning meals and evening meals. So I feed them twice a day at regular times, just like you would with a dog. In addition to the alfalfa, they kind of sit, even though I only feed them twice, all day long, the sheep kind of sit and tend to look like this. So take a look at the white sheep, Marshmallow, and she's just constantly, she's sitting and she's chewing. And this is because sheep, 
they eat a lot of things that a lot of other animals can't process very well. Like alfalfa is really hard to digest. So they actually throw up a little bit of alfalfa from their stomach, chew it, and swallow it again. So now I have another question for you. Uh, so you can answer it down here. How many stomachs does a sheep have? Do they have one stomach? Do they have two stomachs? Or do they have four stomachs? So that's kind of a crazy question. So one stomach, if we can think of things with one stomach, I am an animal that has one stomach. So my food goes in, my stomach helps digest it, and then it passes through me. So an animal with two stomachs, and when I'm trying to think of something with two stomachs, I usually think of a honeybee. A honeybee actually has two stomachs that serve different purposes. So she'll suck up nectar, and her first stomach actually just holds the nectar so she can bring it home and go back and turn it into honey. Her second stomach is just like ours and digests her food. A sheep, and it looks like about half of us guessed that a sheep has four stomachs. And that is correct. Sheep have four stomachs. So that is quite a lot of stomachs, and I think I've got a picture of that right here. So the sheep have four stomachs, and let's see. I think I have to move where I am, but then I can color on this a little bit. So the sheep's stomachs are over here. So the first stomach that the alfalfa comes into is the rumen. So the rumen is filled with all of these little uh, micro uh, microbes that help break down the alfalfa. So they really need to start working on that. From there, kind of goes into the reticulum here, and then the uh, sheep throws it back up into their mouth and chews it and then swallows it again, and then throws it up and chews it and swallows it again. Once the alfalfa is digested, it goes into the second two, two stomachs. So this is the third stomach, and then this one is the fourth stomach. So it kind of does this loop all through the four stomachs. So you might notice that this is a picture of a goat. So goats also have four stomachs, and so do cows, deer, things like that. So because they're all eating grasses that are really hard to digest. So a sheep has four stomachs. So great job on guessing. So now let's take a look at um, some other ways that I take care of my animals. So I'm giving them food. So the other thing that I'm giving my sheep is this mineral block. Unfortunately, I don't put this mineral block in with them because they think it's a treat and we just scarf it down in one sitting and it's supposed to last a long time. So I crumble off little pieces of this mineral block and I feed it to the sheep like a treat. So they love to gobble this up. They come running for this. So Coco's usually shy, but she'll run over a second. So the sheep lick this up and they think it's a treat, but this is actually like vitamins. So the sheep are eating this and it's really, really good for their bodies. So they need to eat some extra vitamins that they may not get in the alfalfa that I'm giving them. So they need to have a nice balanced diet and it includes eating this mineral block that I give for them, which is like a vitamin. So then after I've given them the mineral block, there are some things that sheep can't eat. Even though they have really strong stomachs, I need to make sure they don't eat anything that's bad for them. So inside of where my sheep live, there is this weird situation here. So it's actually a barricade that I've made out of a ladder and other things because the sheep keep breaking through it. And what's on the other side of this barricade is actually my chicken food. Because chickens eat lots of grains and like corn, other things like that, that are actually really bad for sheep. If my sheep eat it, they might get really sick or they could even die. So I have this little hole over here where my chickens can go in to eat. You can see there's all this wool on the edge because Coco keeps trying to go in there because sheep can eat grain, but only in small amounts. We usually only feed it to them maybe in the winter time to help get them some extra fat. 
um, so that they can stay nice and warm. Or when they're about to give birth to babies, we start giving them grain. So a little, just a little bit of grain, not a lot. Because if they scarf down all of my chicken food, it would be really bad for them. But my ch my sheep do not have an off switch. They don't know when to stop eating. So that's why I have to keep them out of it. Just like with a dog, you can't put a whole bag of food down because your dog would probably eat it all in one sitting and get very sick. So that's why I feed my sheep twice a day with measured meals of alfalfa so they don't get too fat. And I make sure they can't get into things that are going to make them sick because they like to eat everything. Even when I go to take care of my sheep, they nibble on me a little bit. So they taste my boots and my shirt, uh, anything that I'm wearing. They like to eat my keys. So they'll like kind of nibble on my keys when I'm in there. So they like to taste a lot of things. So in addition to food, I have to make sure my sheep have water. So here is where my sheep's water is. So this is just a bowl and it's connected to a hose so it automatically fills up when it gets empty i have to scoop it out when it gets too dirty um so usually and here's my chicken francesca featherbottom who is demonstrating how to drink water out of this water dish um so i have to make sure that, that my sheep have clean water so i have this dish that will refill when it gets too low, and I have to scoop it out occasionally. So every few days, I usually scoop it out so that all the dirt goes out and it's nice, clean, fresh water. Then, so I give my uh, sheep food, I give them water, and I have to give them shelter. So let's look at what their shelter looks like. And here, if you saw my chicken class, you're saying, hey, you can't fool me. This is the chicken's house. This is kind of, it is both a chicken house and a sheep house. So if we go inside and we look, the top is the chicken coop. On the bottom, I have a cage full of baby chickens. So the sheep are sharing with the baby chickens. But the place where the sheep sleep is that three-sided area down at the bottom. Um, so it helps keep them out of the wind. It keeps them in the shade. It keeps rain from getting on top of them. So the sheep actually like to sleep in a shed that only has three sides. So I have a picture of what, if I lived on a bigger farm, I might have a shelter that looks more like this. So these are some very silly looking sheep that I found online, but they live in a shed that has three walls and then just one big open side. So that is the sort of shelter that a sheep lives in. Additionally, so these sheep are kind of out in the, middle of a field and I have to keep my sheep safe. So one way in a big open area like this to keep your sheep safe is to use a livestock guardian dog. So this big white dog that's as big as all the sheep around it, this is a special type of dog. This dog doesn't want to chase the sheep. It doesn't growl at the sheep. The sheep are its friends. So this dog is specially bred to guard the sheep. So it usually just sits quietly with the sheep, it moves with them, and if it sees anything dangerous, so maybe a new person that it doesn't know, or a coyote or a wolf, this big dog gets up and barks and will chase away predators. So by having a livestock guardian dog with the sheep, it helps keep them safe. For me, I don't have to keep my sheep safe from uh, any sort of big animals because we kind of live in a city area. But I still make sure that their area is safe so that nothing can get in and maybe hurt them because we still have raccoons that probably couldn't kill a sheep but might be able to hurt it if it got in and it was looking for food. So in my area, let me show you what the outside looks like. So here, when the gate of the chicken coop area is closed, you can see Marshmallow just sitting in there and all the chickens walking around. This has fencing on the sides, underneath, on top, so no other animals can actually get out of here. So at night, I make sure all of my animals are locked up in here so that they can be nice and safe from predators. So this is the way that I keep my animals safe. Uh, and then I have to keep all of my animals healthy. So I have to keep my sheep healthy. And the way I keep my sheep healthy 
is I kind of have to be their vet. So here's one of the medicines that I give my sheep. So I have to read directions on my sheep. So this one keeps the sheep from getting worms that are inside their body and might make them sick. So it's a little liquid medicine. And so I have a little dropper and I measure out a very specific amount. So I'll put that in and pull up some of the liquid. And then I have to feed this to my sheep. So they're running around because they think I might feed them alfalfa. So I usually do this around dinner time and I only have to do it every three to six months. So this helps keep my sheep nice and healthy. So this is kind of like a medicine that I have to give to them. So I do have a video of when I give this to my sheep, which you can see that Marshmallow doesn't like it. So I'm going to show you a video of me giving this to Marshmallow. So I usually just have to hold her a little bit. And this is just like giving medicine to your dog or cat. They don't like it for just a second. So I squirt the liquid in there and she bites it down. So she's swallowing it. So I give it slowly so that she can swallow it. And then she just kind of shakes it off and she's totally fine. So it's a little bit unpleasant for her for just like a few seconds. And then she's safe and healthy for three to six months. And then I'll give her a little extra dose. But it doesn't hurt her at all. It just helps keep her healthy, even though she doesn't like it for that little that I have to give it to her. I also have to give my sheep shots, so I don't have a video of that, but I put my sheep on their back and they get really relaxed, and then I can quickly give them a little shot without them noticing, and then they can go run away. So I have to do a lot of the things that a vet does because there are not very many vets in my area that take care of sheep. Let me show you one more thing that I do to take care of my sheep, and that is actually, trimming their hooves. So their hooves actually grow like nails and they have these walls on the edges. And here I'm just trimming away little tiny pieces at a time because I don't wanna to trim too much. But you can see their nails are getting kind of long and there's a little wall uh, going over. And I usually also scrape out uh, any of the dirt or muck that's in there to make sure everything's nice and clean. If I don't cut their nails, the sheep can actually get diseases on their feet that makes it hard for them to walk. So I have to make sure to trim their nails. And since my sheep live on a kind of a softer dirt, I usually have to trim their nails every three to six months. If they lived on like a concrete surface or got, had some space to kind of file their own nails a little bit, I might not have to trim them as often. But that is part of keeping my sheep healthy is I have to keep their hooves nice and trimmed. And the last one, this is, again, not a video of my sheep because I still have to figure out how to do this, um, is shearing my sheep actually helps keep them healthy. So this is a video of someone shearing their sheep. My sheep are just a little over one year old, which means it's time for their first shearing. So you use a big clipper. It's kind of like a hair trimmer. So if you have short hair and you might buzz your hair, it's a big version of that. So this is a really big trimmer. And you can uh, run this along the sheep's skin so it doesn't cut them, but it trims off all of the wool. And the reason why we need to trim the sheep's wool is because if we let it grow and grow and grow, the sheep actually can't regulate its own body temperature. So the sheep might get way too hot in the summer and that's not healthy for it. Um, the other thing that's bad is there can be mud and other stuff stuck in the wool and shearing it off of them annually helps keep them healthy because little bugs might start living in it and flies, if there's mud in their wool, flies can lay eggs there and then there are flies all around this sheep. So it can actually get them sick if you don't keep your sheep clean and shear them on a regular basis. Um, so it's just about time to shear my sheep. So I don't have a video of me shearing my sheep yet. We're actually probably gonna do that this weekend. Um, you can see that this sheep, she got a little uncomfortable for a bit, but usually when you lay the sheep on its back, um, so even just kind of in reclining, so sort of like it's sitting in a chair or a hammock, 
the sheep becomes very calm. Uh, so this is a very quick process, usually only takes less than five minutes to shear a sheep and then they're nice and clean and they don't need to be shorn for another year. And then plus, we get all of the wool from that. So that is some of the ways that I take care of my sheep. So over here, I'm gonna go back to the questions area over here and read through some of these. So if you had any questions in there, I'll try to answer some of your questions. Or if you wanted to see a video of something again, if you wanted to see the sheep again, let me know what you wanna see again and we can take a look at it as I'm answering some questions. So let me go back and uh, let's see. I'm gonna read through some of these questions. I, uh, sorry, just reading through. Does it hurt on their feet when I trim their nails? So it actually doesn't hurt their feet. The reason why I was only taking off a little bit at a time is because sometimes it's hard to see where the nail stops and where their nice soft pad begins. So it's just like trimming my own nails is if I trim them and it's just that nail part, the very tip white part of my nail, that doesn't hurt at all when I trim my nails. But if I accidentally trim a little too much and it gets down to the pink area, that hurts and I might bleed a little bit. So if, I don't, if I'm not careful trimming my sheep's hooves, then I can hurt them and they might bleed a little bit, but that's why I'm very careful and I trim little pieces until I can start to see um, the hoof getting a little thinner and then I stop. Um, so it's just like trimming your nails so it doesn't hurt as long as you do it right. Let's see. Um, can we see pictures of your sheep again? And yes, you may. Let me put up the picture of their little faces. Let me, oh, it's a ways back, but let me put up that picture so you can see them. Just clicking through and there's some wool and here's the sheep. Um, so Coco again is the brown one and Marshmallow is the white one. So let's see. If I shave marshmallow and cocos for, can I still tell them apart? Yes, I definitely can. So if I shave the wool off of these two sheep, they still have, uh, Coco actually has a pretty dark skin and she has this little layer of black fuzz. So when I shear the sheep, I actually leave just the tiniest little bit of fuzz on their skin. Um, so I can still see that Coco is, even though she looks brown, it's because the sun has kind of bleached that outer part of the wool. If I shear her, she will look a pure black color. Um, and Marshmallow, she's getting a little grubby in that photo, so she rolls around in the dirt. I've actually washed her at a pet wash. Um, so I took her to like basically a dog grooming place and we washed her because she gets so dirty because she's white. Um, so when we trim her, she's gonna be a little off-white creamy color. So I'm definitely still gonna be able to tell them apart. And you can actually see a bit of what they look like right on their noses. So they will look, Coco has that nice black nose. So she's gonna look all like that. And Marshmallow has a, ni a nice little white fuzzy nose and her whole body is gonna look like that when we shear her. Let's see. Oh, have they ever eaten something they shouldn't? all the time these sheep that's why i keep having that barricade around my chicken coop with like a ladder and the other things is because i built a fence and coco she keeps like she'll kind of crawl over it a little bit and mash it down so the fence kind of bent so that she could get in and eat some grain luckily she didn't eat very much grain um, so if she does get into something that is not good for her, basically what the grain does is it causes them to get really bloated and gassy and they don't have a really good way to deal with that. Um, so I usually give them mineral oil, which helps them pass it a little more quickly. So just the same way as I gave them the worm medicine is I'll give them a little bit of mineral oil and that'll help settle their stomach. The other thing that I do is I walk them around. So I actually have a halter and that is a leash for a sheep. So it goes over their face and around the back of their head. And then I have a little uh, rope 
that I can lead them around on walks. So I usually take the sheep on a walk to help them digest a little bit better. So if they ever eat something they don't, there are some things that I can do to make sure they're gonna be okay. So luckily, uh, my sheep haven't gotten in, into anything too bad for them. The other things that they get into is sometimes I accidentally leave my little gate open and the sheep get out and scarf down my entire garden. So they really love to eat my garden, but that's not bad for them. It's just sad for me because then they eat all my vegetables. Let's see, can we watch a sheep video again? Absolutely. Let me give you guys a video of, this is my favorite video of the sheep, is the sheep jumping. Uh, so I love when they jump. Um, so especially when they get excited. So Marshmallow just does a little pickup, but here Kogo does a really good jump and starts bucking up her back legs. So I'll play that one one more time because like I said, it is my absolute favorite. And while you guys are watching that one, let me go back and see. Um, let's see, do I ever dress them for Halloween? So I don't dress up the sheep for Halloween, but after I shear them, I've seen some pretty cute pictures of sheep wearing flower crowns. So a little crown made of flowers. So after I shear them, I'm gonna try and take a picture of them wearing a flower crown. Other than that, it's a little hard to dress up a sheep, um, but I think they would look really cute with a flower crown. Let's see, do my sheep ever get sick? So my sheep have not gotten sick, but so the only thing that they've kind of gotten into is when they eat something bad and then I have to treat them a little bit. But there are lots of things that can happen when they do get sick. Um, so they can, if I'm not taking care of their hooves, I might have to put cream on their hooves. So I'll have to clean them and trim them way back um, and put cream on them. So that's one way they can get sick. Um, there's actually a few other ways they can get sick, but if I give them their shots and their wormer, this is to prevent them from getting sick. So usually sheep are pretty healthy animals and don't get sick even as often as we do, um, especially when you're taking really good care of them. So luckily my sheep have been in really good health because I make sure to always make sure they have enough food, nice clean water. I'm taking care of their nails and trimming them and I'm giving them medicine to help keep them safe. Let's see, um, how many sweaters can you make with one uh, shearing of the sheep? And I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I'm gonna see. My hopes and dreams is that, so I am going to shear marshmallow and cocoa and we're going to wash their wool and process it into yarn um, so i have a friend of mine who is great at spinning wool and hopefully i can get hopefully we can make more than this but my hope is to get one white sock and one brown sock so that i can have my marshmallow sock and my cocoa sock so i will let you know after i shear the sheep um, it depends definitely on how big the sheep is since i have miniature sheep um, I'm getting less wool than the full size version of this sheep. So like I said, my sheep are about the size of a golden retriever. And right now they have about, I think marshmallows uh, wool is looking a little thinner than Coco's, probably because I've washed hers. And you can actually shrink the wool on them as I figured out a little bit later by I washed them and put them in the sun. And so they have a few spots that shrunk a little bit. Um, but marshmallows wool looks to be about maybe two to three inches thick and Coco's fur seems to be about, uh, wool seems to be about three to four. So they are pretty fluffy little critters. They're going to look skinnier once we shear them. Let's see. How do I wash my sheep? So I wash my sheep by, I only really wash uh, marshmallow. Coco stays a lot cleaner than marshmallow. Um, even she's a brown sheep, so you could see it less. But marshmallow just seems to get in everything. And the sheep tend to, per or the uh, chickens seem to perch on her more. So sometimes they poop on her. So I have taken her to the pet wash. So we lift marshmallow up and put her in this big tub. And then we wash her with warm water. So we make sure it's not hot because we don't want to hurt her. Um, so it's kind of a room temperature water. So it's not going to hurt her or shrink her wool. And then we towel her dry. So it's 
of like squeezing her. So we kind of run our hands around her and get all of the extra water out. And then we use a towel and kind of pat her down, try to get her as dry as possible. And then at the pet wash, which is why we do it there, they have a nice dryer that doesn't get hot. Um, so like a hair dryer that I might use on my hair gets really hot, but at the a pet wash, we can blow dry them and fluff their uh, wool back up and then they're nice and clean. So that's how we wash our sheep. And let's see, I think I got through all of the, oh, there was one question is, do the sheep have trouble seeing with the wool in their eyes? So they actually have, you can see that they've got shorter, let me show you guys a picture of them while I mention this. So let's look here. So you can see that they have kind of less wool around their face, so right around their mouth, so that that way they can eat a lot better and their ears don't seem to have much wool on them. And then there is actually just a little tiny ring around their eyes, so you can see these pockets, but they are getting to about the longest length of wool that I want them to have. So I'm definitely going to make sure to shear their faces so that they have a nice clean area. Otherwise, this is actually one of the reasons why it's important to shear them is it also helps keep them safe from predators. Because if they get too big and wooly, they can't run away from predators or they might get stuck on tree branches or bushes, or they might just not be able to see the predators very well. And the reason why this happens, like what? How can these sheep live without humans? Over a long, long time, we have bred sheep to just make all of this wonderful wool for us. So we have actually kind of changed these animals to produce something great for us. So even though it is functional, for the sheep, we've kind of changed it in such a way that they can't survive very easily without us. There are wild versions of sheep, so bighorn sheep and things like that, and they can actually live just fine in the wild, but they have a different type of wool, and actually many of those types of sheep are hair sheep. So they have hair, more like our dogs do, um, instead of this nice, thick, woolly coat. Um, so these animals can't live very easily without humans. So we definitely have to shear them every year. So let me see if there was uh, anything else. Do I have more than two sheep? I actually only have two sheep, and that's because I have a very small yard. It is definitely enough sh uh, space for my sheep. So I have my whole farm is about 600 square feet. So that's about 30 feet in one direction and the other one is 20 feet. And I have three beehives, eight chickens, two sheep, and I have veggie beds in that space. So it's very, very, very small. So if you wanna watch more and see some more of my videos, I'm at Sager Family Farm. So that's the name of my little farm and my website. And if you wanna watch me on YouTube after this, that's where you can find me. Oh, and there's one more question is, what is the green stuff? on cocoa and marshmallow's face. That is food, so I let them loose. I usually uh, keep them, the houses in my area are pretty close together and my neighbors love these sheep. So I usually put up baby gates to keep them in the areas in between our houses, which usually have lots and lots of grass and leaves growing. So the green stuff on their face are just some leaves and weeds, so I let them loose in this side yard and they ate a whole bunch of grass, but then they got leaves all over themselves. And I don't usually take it off of them because usually when I put them back in their pen, they will eat it off of each other or the chickens will eat it. Um, so they definitely get cleaned off of them, but they're always getting, whenever I feed them alfalfa, they have alfalfa all over their faces. They are messy little pigs when they eat, um, which is why my nickname for these two is the fluff pigs because they are very messy and they are very, very chubby and they would love to eat as much as I would possibly ever feed them. Let's see, and one more is how long can sheep live? So these sheep, this variety of sheep can live for about 14 years. So that is actually usually a little bit longer than a big dog like a golden retriever. And let's see, oh, can I use the tails? So some sheep, um, these sheep actually have um, a docked tail 
which means they had a long tail, but sometimes that's not very safe for the sheep. It can get caught on stuff. So they dock it, which means they cut it when they're very, very, very young. So don't have tails, but a lot of sheep do have long tails, a lot like a cat or a dog. Um, so um, we usually shear the wool off of the tails and we can use that. So let's see, I think I got to all of the questions. Maybe I missed one or two, hopefully not. If I missed anything and it's a burning question for you, you can send me an email. So ask your parents to send me an email. You can comment on my Facebook or my Instagram. I will get back to you because I love answering questions about my cute little critters. So I really um, hope that you liked learning about Marshmallow and Coco today and seeing some of the cute videos of them. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye. Oh wait, someone asked me what we're learning next week. So I'll tell you that really quick before I say bye. So next week on Tuesday, we are gonna be learning about plant life cycles. Um, so we're actually gonna be planting some seeds. So if you wanna follow along with me, I'm gonna be planting pumpkins, sunflowers, and radishes. They all grow pretty quick and pretty differently. And we're gonna be measuring them over time. So this is gonna be our ongoing project that we'll give updates on on Tuesdays. So uh, you can follow along by planting your own plant on Tuesday with me, and then we'll check in on it every week. So that is our Tuesday class. In our Thursday class, we are actually gonna be making um, a garden salad dressing. So we're gonna learn how to make a garden salad dressing. So all the components of making a cool salad dressing so that you can experiment at home and maybe compete with your siblings or even compare it with your friends via video chat of who made a better salad dressing. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and hopefully see you next time. Bye.